This video presentation has been classified by the ABC as M. It contains material that is not recommended for persons under 15 years. As well as this vodcast, you can watch The Chaser's War on everything Friday nights on ABC television or download it from abc.net.au slash chaser. And it's been a week of backdowns for our Prime Minister, mm -hmm. hasn't it? Firstly, the asylum seeker Bill, gone. Now he's even allowing a conscience vote on stem cell research and yeah. cloning. How just wants to clone a few of the remaining backbenchers that actually vote with him, I think. <laughs> I, well, I heard he warmed to the idea of cloning when someone told him the next APEC meeting could look like this. It's all part of the master plan. <laughs> We'll also solve the problem of poor attendances at the cricket. Absolutely, and uh, with cloning, he can finally get that threesome he's always dreamed about with George W. Bush. Also this week, uh, a major increase to airport security, mm. of course, after that liquid explosive terror scare in London. They reckon it now takes about four hours to board some planes in some places. I know, and uh, hats off to the terrorists mm. for really hitting us where it hurts. If we just have a look at uh, Al-Qaeda's scorecard to date, still no luck destroying our democracy, no luck destroying freedom, but they have won the war on our duty-free shops. <laughs> That's the one they really yeah, wanted to win. You wasn't literally it? can't take anything onto a flight anymore. Have you seen the list of banned objects? You, you can't take water, you no. can't take bottled drinks, but on the upside, you also can't take on Dan Brown novels. <laughs> they, they now make you put all your belongings in this little see-through plastic yeah. bag. It's a bit over the top, I would have thought. No, it? no, I disagree. Personally, I don't think we can be cautious enough on this one. Is this fitting with the you can only wear plastic have, have stuff in plastic? Is that alright? That's beautiful, mate. Is that alright? Cool. Good, We're not too good. overdressed. I would say overdressed at all. Yeah, you think, do we have to take the dash? I'd say you've got to take your dash off. Oh, oh mate, we'll still the security, eh? Oh, Thanks, buddy. What kind of underpants are they? Superman underpants. I wouldn't let Julian in like that with that body anyway. Look, a uh, very pre-9-11 mindset there. But anyway, a time now for our new segment called... Yes, what have we learnt from history? Because, Craig, the PM spoke at a summit yesterday about the importance of history. Mm, mm. And uh, we agree with him. Often it pays to cast your mind back to see what impact history has had on our society. Yeah, that's right. And to find out if we've learnt the lessons from the past. For instance, I've always loved the story of the Trojan horse, you know, where the Greeks won the war against Troy. Yeah, Troy in Turkey. Yeah, in Turkey, exactly. The Greeks smuggled soldiers through the city gates inside a giant wooden horse. They came out and won the war. A defining moment in warfare history. Exactly. But would anyone be so stupid as to fall for it again. Would anybody let a Trojan horse through their gates today? Wait, can we just take the Trojan horse in? Can we just leave it here overnight? You're going to pick it up tomorrow morning again, are you? Yeah, pick it up tomorrow morning. Right, your left hand side up the next door. Right now,
the Greeks. It's a gift. Can we leave it here for the night? <laughs> oh, it's the Consul General. We just want to leave it here for the night. Hello? We can't leave this here. We just uh, got this uh, Trojan horse. Can we leave it here for the night? Inside. What do you mean? I'm sure there's no one inside. Why would there be anyone inside? Can we just leave it here at the barracks for the night? I, I had no idea he was in there. I had no idea. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey. Sunday, the Australian Defence Forces Birdman Rally, the Blackhawk, Sea Sprite and F-111 all battling it out in their bid to get airborne. Find out which military aircraft, if any, can actually fly. All the thrills, spills and the massive public bills for these useless Defence Force purchases. The Australian Defence Force's Birdman Rally kicks off at two, actual liftoff could take longer. Now mate, we were talking about uh, airport security before, but I'll tell you what, it is not just airports. Security is literally everywhere now. I mean, wherever you go, there's like a video surveillance camera yeah, it's watching It's getting ridiculous. You. It's everywhere now. Look, I, I think it's gone too far. I don't think we need all this surveillance. Well, especially in the Big Brother house. I'd like to switch off those cameras right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. But, but I do wonder about this video surveillance mm. and, you know, whether it actually works. Like, those guys who sit at the front desk with all those security monitors, mm. I don't reckon they're, they're watching half the time. I've never seen them watching. Yeah. They're reading, sleeping, anything but looking at the monitors. Yeah. So just how lax are they? To find out, I spent this week trying to steal those signs that say this area is under video surveillance, just to see if anyone would notice. Turned your video surveillance sign. Just checking your video surveillance. Sure, we're just testing yep. video surveillance, and obviously yours is fine. Can you, just, can you just pop that under here? Yeah, thanks. Thank you, thanks for that. At Medibank Private, your premiums pay for more. More bonuses for our CEO. More submissions to the minister to raise our fees. And more people jumping around like dickheads on our app. Medibank Private. Healthy members, healthier profits. Option Creek. I feel poor now. I feel poor now. This week. My, my heart's been breaking for poor old Dell computers. Mm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with their laptops whatsoever. They're actually perfectly good products, you know, except for the minor inconvenience of their batteries exploding into flames. But you know, I felt the only possible solution would be a visit from the surprise spruker. <laughs> 
That's right, shoppers, come on into Dell Computers. It's our explosive fire sale. It's a burning battery bonanza. Four million computers are walking out the fire escape. Yes, they have got to go up in your face. Red hot parking, <laughs> sir, that'll leave you a red hot corpse. It's dangerously defective digital devices madness. These laptops will blow your top off. So bring your truck, bring your trailer, bring your fire extinguisher. Look, the only equipment that needs shutting down here, sir, is these laptops. <laughs> Andrew, I was in a cafe earlier today, and you know how cafes often talk about their world-famous smoothies or world-famous big breakfast. You know, everything's world-famous world now. World-famous, according to their own advertising, mm. anyway. I mean, it's true. Look, we've got Mrs Mac's famous beef pies, the world-famous love machine sex club in King's Cross, and, uh, of course, the world-famous Moo Moo Burger. And uh, not forgetting, Victoria lays claim to St Kilda Road, their world-famous boulevard. It's oh. incredibly world-famous. Oh, yes, <laughs> it is. I mean, who needs the Taj Mahal when you've got this bitumen road? Still uh, magnificent as these icons may be, we couldn't help wondering, are they really world famous? I mean, would some random person in Kenya have heard of them? Mm -hmm. We weren't sure about that, so uh, we sent Charles Firth there to find out. Do you recognise this street? Is it in Nairobi or somewhere? No, it's in, it's in Australia. I don't know it. Uh, I've never seen this site. It's in Melbourne. Do you recognise it? Yes. <laughs> Do you really recognise it? No. Mrs. Max Pies. You what? The, the, they're not famous. What about this one? The world famous love machine. I don't know. It's actually in Sydney. Um, just around the corner from Chris Taylor's house. I'm, I have no idea. Not much like in Nairobi. So let's try our luck here at a Maasai tribe on the border of Kenya and Tanzania. Anyone here recognise this boulevard? It's world famous. Wow. That's good. You never saw something like this. Do any of you recognise this boulevard? <laughs> Do you recognise? <laughs> Mrs. Max, traditional famous beef pie. Surely someone here's had that. No one here has even seen the world famous love machine. Nobody. They're clearly not world famous. You know, I'm going to go back to Australia and uh, lodge a few complaints. <laughs> Simon Chesterman is an accounts manager for a leading merchant bank. Computer says no. He's also one of the growing thousands of Australians who spend their entire workday reciting catchphrases from Little Britain. I said, yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but yeah. Little Britain impersonations in this office alone have been up 20% in the last year. Oh, and, uh, sorry. How unladylike to interrupt an interview. We are both ladies, yes? <laughs> I guess it started with The Simpsons. I used to do a lot of dom and, uh, and that kind of material, but uh, then I went through a huge Kath and Kim phase, you know. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Glass of water? I want that one. Come on, Simon, we've got a lot to get through. Yeah, no. Little Britain impersonators now pose the number one threat to workplace productivity. Is it because I'm gay? A statistic that employers nationwide can no longer afford to ignore. Little Britain impersonations! Now shut up! Look at my eyes, the eyes, the eyes, look at my eyes. Look very closely into my eyes. Okay, first up. Unemployment. Uh, this week I learnt how you can spot a real dull bludger. They're always playing computer games. This is how 49-year-old Kevin Crawley spends a good part of his day. He spends his days playing computer games. Dad Fred is too sick to work. He hasn't had a job in five years. Just a tip, by the way, if you ever do find yourself in their current affairs piece and the reporter tries to set up a shot with you playing computer games, Probably time to get a job. Let's try it. I mean, fancy these bludgers taking a break. Any of them should be working 24 hours a day. I mean, look, just this morning, I, f I found this whole building full of these people. I had to go in and sort them out. You lazy bludgers, <laughs> sponging bludgers! Get off your lazy ass and look for a job now! Why aren't you out looking for work? I'm on holiday! Rubbish! Get out, you dry up society! <laughs> Now, it's not 
like it's hard to find a job either. For instance, reporter Rodney Lois turned up out of the blue at our Centrelink office with a job offer no one could resist. We're from Channel 7. Apparently there's a fruit picking shortage up in Mildura and we're going to take a free bus up there if anyone's interested in coming up there with us tomorrow to pick fruit. Now, how lazy would you be to not immediately move house to a small country vineyard and undertake manual labour? Bludgers! You see, that is why they call them the wasted generation. Right there. Sorry? Who calls them the wasted generation? They do. Who? They do. They call them the wasted generation. <laughs> oh, them! Oh, oh, they've been very busy yeah. on current affairs yeah. shows lately, giving names to everything. In Australia, they call it the Kylie effect. I guess they call me the, uh, the Colonel Sanders of weight loss. They call the Mekong Delta the toilet bowl of Asia. Oh, nice. They call us unsubstantiated bullshit. <laughs> well, let's look at the current affairs tally board now. And a big week for today tonight, of course, in the medical freak show category. They're leading ACA 22 stories to 17. They are ahead in Pokey's outrage, 10 stories to 1. And, and who would have thought that there'd be only one story about how bad Pokies are on a show owned by PBL, owners of Crown Casino? It's quite a coincidence. <laughs> Finally, a big milestone for today tonight. They are celebrating their 100th ripoff. Off merchants report for 2006. Well done, well done, well done. And we have prepared a very special cake to symbolise that glorious achievement. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Now to this week's lesson, fatties. Now, we say fatties, but we shouldn't give you the impression ACA is insensitive about people struggling with their weight. No. Just look at this piece by radical feminist reporter Brady Halls. Oh, how life has changed for these five women. That would never have happened not so long ago. You see, they once looked like this. Yes, get dieting now, ladies, for your chance to be wolf-whistled by seedy men. And here is how you do it. Now, you may have thought that the best way to lose weight was to eat well and exercise. Oh, no. You are seriously oh, no. mistaken. Oh, no. If you really want to slim down, you need one of these current affairs miracle cures. Are you saying that there's a pill that helps you lose weight without diet or exercise? That's amazing. That's amazing. A new machine they hope will burn away their stubborn wobbly bits without them lifting a finger. Karen Gatt is best known for shedding 70 kilos by walking around the clothesline in her backyard. And it literally melts the fat away. Yes, it does. Franz Hosingschwatner is a world expert on the treatment. A skin patch. I lost over 30 kilos. Now she's turned to hypnosis. And you're at the perfect weight that suits you. I feel healthy. Now, the other way to lose weight, of course, is to find yourself a motivational speaker who talks like Dr. Seuss. Between my meals, I drink water or tea. Between each meal, I stay sank free. He's, he's so charismatic yeah, when he yeah, speaks, yeah. though. I mean, if you thought this guy was inspirational... Well, they will not be judged by the colour of our skin, but by the content of our character. I have a dream today. Then you haven't seen Mark Stevens in full flight. Drink more water, drink more water, drink more water. I am a winner. My destiny is to succeed. I will win. What a great orator. And by the way, he is absolutely right about the people who attend his course. According to Mark, it's their brain at fault. <laughs> Well, some fantastic weight loss solutions there anyway. Now, uh, one guy who's uh, very keen on weight loss, mm. of course, is David from The Biggest Loser. He's already lost 61 yeah. kilos through actual hard work, so uh, we thought the least we could do is finish the job off for him the easy way. First up, we tried the slim patches. <laughs> no, they were going quite well, so I read him some Dr Seuss. One fish, two fish, <laughs> fish, blue fish. Then we tried the magic pills, a bit of hypnosis. Uh, then the fat melting wand we tried next, and a good dose of Dr. Husing Schwatner. There we go. And then we did them all at once while walking around the clothesline. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the all new David from The Biggest Loser!
the moment their process is not legal. Senator, can I ask you one other question? In sport, what is BMX short for? Oh, well, it's, it's short for fast bikes. <laughs> BMX, X, yes. F for fast, yeah? Yeah, I think the X is for extra fast. Right, OK, excellent, excellent. Uh, the answer is, in fact, bicycle motocross. I tell you what, you never lose a day here without you learn something important. Indeed. <laughs> Uh, this week, it's been a bad week for the government as university degrees top the $200,000 mark. Mm. But Jules, Jules, you've got to put these fees in context. Sure, a medicine degree now costs $237,000, but at least the government saved you your student union fee. Ah, true, true. <laughs> Did you see this too? With rising petrol prices, the government's announced a subsidy of 2000 bucks for anyone who converts their car from petrol to LPG mm. and 10000 bucks for anyone who converts their car into a breakdancing <laughs> road horse. <laughs> Overseas. <laughs> Good policy, yeah. yeah. Sustainable. Overseas and the Sun newspaper in Britain has been accused of publishing an old photo of Prince Harry groping a girl at a drunken party. Yeah, I mean, still, even if it happened three years ago, it's pretty racy mm, conduct. Mm. I mean, Harry should know the proper royal protocol. If you're going to grope a girl at a party, you should do it wearing a Nazi uniform. Mm, mm. <laughs> but the palace was at pains to explain that their only problem with the picture was that it was an old photo. They've asked that in future the media only use the latest official Prince Harry groping photo. <laughs> Loves his grand, doesn't yeah, he? he does. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, Independence Day celebrations have seen the sentences of convicted drug smugglers Chappelle Corby and Renee Lawrence reduced by two months. Mm, and the ringleaders of the Bali Nine also had a minor reduction in their death sentence, down from eight bullets to seven. Mm. <laughs> now, as we mentioned earlier, uh, airports worldwide have introduced some tough new restrictions mm. on carry-on luggage. Uh, the only thing you're allowed to take into the cabin now are clear plastic bags. Yeah, they're even enforcing this for sick bags oh. as well, which really sucks. Yeah. It's not good. <clears throat> Uh, of course, the other thing that people are talking about uh, is the idea of profiling passengers mm. to try and screen out Islamic terrorists. Yeah, I'm not so sold on the idea myself. I mean, it's not like you can just pick a terrorist just by the way they look or by the sound of their name. Well, not unless their name was something as blatant as, say, Terry Wrist or Al-Qaeda. Yeah, which just happens to be the names we used to book some domestic tickets this week <laughs> to see just how lax security for our local flights is. And uh, as you can see here, with an e-ticket, I could just pick up a boarding pass. Uh, no problems there, no photo ID required. Headed straight through to the boarding gate. And then when I didn't board the flight, they even paged me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final boarding call for Miss Mia Call, Paul Franklin, Al Qaeda, <laughs> and Terry Wrist, all travelling to Melbourne today. Virgin Blue Flight 822. Yes, it is ad road test time again. Checking the claims of TV commercials to see if they stack up in real life. And, uh, of all the hits on our guest book, there's one ad campaign more than any other that people have always been asking us to test. That's right. I'm sure uh, most of you would have seen this one. It's an ad campaign for the Ford Focus hatchback featuring Jackie O. OK, now here's the first one. <laughs> now, theory goes that the car's handling is so smooth that if you put a goldfish bowl on one of the seats, the goldfish will be absolutely fine. No spillage whatsoever. None at all. It's a, it's a handy feature in a car, but okay. is it actually true? I got myself a Ford Focus and put it to the test. Goldfish safety. And it's not just fish that Jackie O likes to courier around the city. Oh, and she another loves ad. her animals, doesn't she? She does. Well, in another ad, she <laughs> for the small dog, which in her usual ditziness, she's absent mindedly left on the roof of her car. Again, the ad asserts the dog will be absolutely fine because the car's ultra smooth ride. But let's see how a dog would go on top of my Ford Focus. <laughs>
Simon. I blame Jackie O for endorsing such an unreliable car. Oh, look, it's OK, Chris. I know you're hurting, oh. son. I know you're hurting. Poor little Grover. I, oh. I, I took little Grover oh. back to Jackie O and demanded some explanations. <laughs> Excuse me, Jackie. Excuse me, Jackie. Um, just like that bit of a word. Hi there. Um, you know the whole driving around with your dog on the roof thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we tried it. Didn't work out so well. Oh, God! Poor old Grover. He's, he's seen better days. Yeah. It's disgusting. Where did well, you get well, You're telling me it's disgusting. It's my, it's my dog. It's really horrible. Do you have any ideas what, why this happened? I mean, the Ford Focus is meant to be smooth as. It is smooth. But the only thing that's smooth is my dog. We it's don't actually dog. recommend that you put your dogs on the roof of the car. But that happens in the ad. It's a hypothetical. Oh, I, I just thought I should warn you in case you, you do you, it again. Because I know you're an animal lover. Up. Maybe run an experiment next time and maybe yeah. maybe drive a car on your roof or something. <laughs> just, just to make sure it works first. Right. Before you put the dog on, okay? Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. Any small print on the outside oh, hypothetical? Certainly, that's oh. just about all we have time for. But remember, you can watch tonight's episode on video podcast. Simply download it. Download it. ABC.net.au/chaser. But probably best not to do that on a Dell laptop. So until next week, <laughs> have a great weekend, and we'll catch you next time. Good night. Good night. The Chaser's War on Everything is repeated every Saturday at 9.30pm on ABC2. This service is supplied by ABC Television and ABC New Media and Digital Services Australia.